Good morning everybody, or Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today we have our unit preview for our next new unit, Raldor. And special shout out, by the way, to the people at War of the Visions Calc. They got the this dude posted on their site super early, so we can bring you this video a little earlier than normal. Um, I really like doing these videos and kind of like imagining what these units are gonna be about. Raldor is looking really cool, and I think he's going to open up a new way of playing the game that has always kind of existed, but he's going to kind of enhance. So what do I mean by all that? Well, I'm going to put a graphic on the screen now that's going to show you his stats, his master ability, and um, three other units that I want to compare him to. Okay, let's start with his master ability. Again, this is what we're seeing uh, a lot of right now. You see he increases HP 10% for fire allies, increases fire attack 15 for fire allies, and increases his own defense penetration by 20. Really good, right? Like that's super good, just like the rest of those um, newer master abilities really are. Cool. But that's not what I'm most excited about with him. Because in honesty, there's not a whole lot of other like fire units that I'm super excited to run him with. Now, I know there are some out there, but whatever. Okay, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Look at the other three units I put on the screen. I want to compare his base stats to their base stats and show you kind of why I'm pretty excited for this dude. All right, let's start with his HP, 3208. The only unit on this list that's comparable to him in HP is Agrius, and she's a tank. And, you know, Agrius is kind of like a bruiser tank. She has respectable damage, but mostly is like a tank that drops status effects. And heck, a lot of times I'll run Agrius without a weapon because what I really have her out there to do is drop status effects. Well, this dude has as much HP as she does. But look at defense and spirit. Without, like, support abilities equipped, he actually has, what, six more defense than Agrius does. She has more spirit. Okay, I give her that. But when it comes to physical tanking, hey, that's really uh, an edge for Raldor here. But let's go further than this. Let's look at his attack, 367. Hey, that's more than Agrius. In fact, that's more than the uh, double cost unit Ruinstern. Now, is this dude gonna do more damage than Ruinstern? No, I'm not saying that. Just like, let's pause on the, uh, hey, Oron, don't be an idiot. I know, he's not gonna do as much damage as Ruinstern. But his attack, his base attack is higher right? Awesome. So I like that about him. I think he's going to be able to put out some damage. He has move three, jump two. No one else on this list has move three, jump two. That's great. Jump two. How often would you have loved to have your like tank or your bruiser have access to two jump so they could just go straight at the enemy instead of having to walk around a mountain or walk down a hill or all the things we have to do on these maps right now. All right. Um, his dexterity and luck yeah, those are pretty good, like 210 lux, okay. His dexterity is a little low, but I'm not worried about that. Um, look at his agility, 60 agility, only one less than Agrius. And uh, this is where Ruinstern does start running away from him a little bit. Uh, Ruinstern has 65 base and Ruinstern's a fast boy. But 60 agility for a beefy guy like Raldor, that's real nice. That's one of the things that's always made Agrius so good is that she's so fast. Well, this dude's going to be as fast as Agrius is. Well, minus one. But still, quick. He's going to be quick. Um, look at his resist, right? He has good slash resist. Or he has some slash resist. He has good pierce resist. He has really good missile resist. He's not weak to punching. He is weak to magic. And he has uh, the fire attack. Okay. So, pretty clearly, this guy to me, just from his stats, is looking like... I want to fight physical units. I don't care what element they are or what type of damage they do. I want to get in their face and just brawl with them, right? Left punch, right punch. Um, he's a punching unit. Like, first of all, that's super hype. And he, he's going to get in their face, be able to take a bunch of hits and hit back. Okay, we're going to build on this taking a bunch of hits thing. And let's go to the next, uh, let's go to the next graphic to show that. Okay. His support abilities and his counter abilities. Here again is where he's different than other units while sort of being the same strength as other units and really cool. Let's start with Flurry Enhancement, his support ability, uh, which upgrades the skill Flurry Counter and gives him 20 accuracy. Cool. I like the accuracy. And check out that Flurry Counter counter ability. Um, with the upgrade, 
it is a 50% chance to proc a two hit fire punching counterattack. So that's great. 50%? That's like, that's going to proc more than reflex. And it feels like reflex procs 100% of the time. That's just me being like salty about reflex, honestly. But a 50% chance to counter with a two hit punch attack that does 165 damage, 165% damage. That's really good. Now, he can. He also has other options. We'll stay on counter abilities for a second. He also has other options down there that are good. Paladin's Guard is one of the better counter abilities in the game because it has a 20% um, chance to reduce physical damage by 45%. So I think there's going to be situations where you might want to run that as your counter ability instead of Flurry with Flurry Enhancement. And then Quick Action, um, I don't like that one so much, but I think Paladin's Guard and Flurry Counter are both really good. Okay, let's go back to his support abilities. Holy Knight's Protection. Hey, that's that Paladin one that's just really good. 12 uh, defense, 12% 12 HP. We really like that one. He has Warrior Spirit. This is an HP plus 12, attack plus 24% buff. Both of his base stats in those categories are high, so he's going to get a nice big buff from those if you want to put some more damage on him. Oh, he also has Thief Lore, which is that, you know, move plus 1, agility plus 12% buff. If he's running that, he's going to be at move 4, jump 2. He's going to not only be fast, but he's going to do something Agrius can't do, which is get around the map easy. And then he has acquired AP up, which you probably aren't going to be running, um, you know, all the time. But it's still a cool one. Okay, so what am I saying here? I'm saying his support abilities are almost all really good. And his counter abilities, he has one of the best physical damage counter abilities in the game. Plus access to a really cool, kind of high damage two hit one that fit the theme of his character. Where I just picture this dude getting in your face and being like, pop, pop. You know, little Muhammad Ali left, right. He, you know, floats like a butterfly, <laughs> stings like a bee, whatever. Um, anyway, I think those abilities are really good. Okay, I don't want to drag the video on though. Let's look at uh, his next stuff. This is all right. So his main job abilities, uh, this is his pugilist job, well, that's what he is, and then his pugilist sub job abilities. So I want to go kind of line by line here and just look at these because they're new and um, again, really cool. So the first one, Resetsu Strike. Now I'm reading this one and I don't quite understand it all the way. I do see that it's a cheap skill, 14 AP, does a little bit of damage, and it move unit to target panel. Does that mean he like jumps to you and punches you in the face? Or does he punch you so hard in the face that you get knocked back like three squares? I think it means it moves him to you because it shows like the range on it. But hey, either way, honestly, if it's a punch you back three squares move, that's really cool. Uh, but I, I think it's the other one. Anyway, we'll just keep going. Iron Body Stance. This is his first buff we're going to look at. Increases max HP and restores HP by 20% for three turns for self. Plus, increases defense 15 for 3 turns. Yeah, this is another, I'm a physical bruiser, and I'm going to buff myself as a physical bruiser move. Cool. I like that move. Leave that on. It's great. Shura's Pummel. Okay. Damage 170% with increased human killer times 25, and it hits in that, like, line in front of him. It's like a shadow stick from a lancer, but it's a fist move. So somehow he's like swinging his fist. He's like punching three people. He's like, bam, 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 punch three people. And that's a really cool move. All right, 26 AP is not like, it doesn't price the move out of being used either. 26 AP is pretty reasonable. All right, next up, Demon Purger. Uh, let's see, damage 210%, so nice big damage. Uh, it hits, it's like the short range and increase modifier by 75% if the number of times you've received damage is five. Here we get into like the weird unique thing about this guy. Now, he has the capability of taking up to five hits. He's going to be tanky enough that he might survive being hit five times. And it sounds like if he does survive being hit five times, he's gonna go kill somebody. Right? He's going to call everybody demons and he's going to purge the world of them with this attack. I, I really want to see how hard this thing hits when he gets his like bonus modifiers and stuff. Uh, weird skill, but cool. I like weird and cool things, which is one of the reasons I'm excited for this weird, cool guy. Anyway, Pugilistic Mastery. This is the next skill we're going to look at. This is um, another buff for him. 
it buffs his allies in just like the straight, you know, right next to him area of effect. Increased strike attack by 40 for three turns. That's a huge buff. And increased in defense penetration 20 for three turns for self. Uh, really good. This is more defense pin for him. And he's going to just be able, like, he's going to be this defense bruiser that if he's fighting another defense bruiser, he's going to punch straight through their defense. So he's this weird mix of, like, tanky bruiser tank busting unit um, that we really don't have in the game right now. So that's cool. All right, what if you run his pugilist sub job? What are you looking at there? You're looking at breathing technique, which is a 30% heal for self. I and mean, that's pretty cool. It reminds me of, like, a Final Fantasy Tactics monk that had that, like, heal they could do. He'll probably use this ability, but probably won't prioritize it till after he's buffed himself. Not super excited about that. And then Spirit Breaker, which has a nice little range to it, costs 18 AP, 130% damage, increase modifier by minus 40% if the number of times you've received damage is 5, but decreases attack 79% for 3 turns, plus increase modifier by minus 40% if the number of times you've received damage is 5 for target. Yeah, good luck figuring out that one. It looks like a small damage, slightly raised attack that debuffs the heck out of um, the enemy's attack. But again, it's like better if he's been hit five times or they've been hit five times. So it, it, run this dude and after somebody's been hit five times, weird stuff's going to happen. Um, can't wait to do my actual review of this unit so I can you know put some of that on the screen and we can see it in action. All right. There's just one more set of abilities that I want to talk about and his limit break. Uh, I'm going to skip the a lot of them because we know what a lot of these are. I do want to real quick though show Paladin on the screen with his limit break because I think Paladin is a really important sub job for him. Now maybe his like debuff ability is so important you might stay away from Paladin. But how clutch are moves like Sentinel going to be for this guy? Um, how good is saintly wall gonna be for this guy i think if you want him taking those five hits so he can start really just doing crazy stuff saintly wall is gonna help him get there a lot and maybe it'll help him get there without having a healer uh so you can run some different kind of team comps so i do want to highlight paladin just real quick because i think saintly wall is one of the most insane buffs in the game for going against physical teams and then you know you have access to sentinel and if you want to run him as a tank you can go taunting blade because i think he could tank about as good as Agrius could against um, physical teams, not magic. Anyway, real quick, his limit burst, Chasm Render, 200% damage, decreased st strike resistance, 38% for three turns to target, and costs 43 AP. He'll probably use that. It does a lot of damage, decreases their strike resistance, so I bet it looks cool too. So there's that. Um, that's all I really want to say about his abilities, right? This is just a quick preview video. Um, and now let's get to the part where you talk about, like, do you pull him? What are you running with? Etc. Okay, let's first talk about Ifrit here. Uh, I've been waiting for a fire physical damage unit that can hold Ifrit and make me feel like I'm getting great value out of that card. I don't have Delita. I just missed him on his banner. So, Ifrit, if you don't know, gives the person holding it fire attack up and gives the group a big attack buff. The problem with that is my fire units have been like Rain, Adelard. These units where I'm like, I don't really run you with a bunch of physical people. And if you're Adelard, I want you running a support magic card. Uh, this guy's going to be a clutch holder of Ifrit. So if you really love this dude, um, I think Ifrit's a really great card for him. And that's what I'm going to try him on when I run my tests. All right. Now, these characters over here, yes, that I think he'll be good at running with. Well, who I put were other units who have fist-based sub-jobs. And I think a lot of people might have missed that, like, Cecil, Engelbert, Kafgarion, Christmas Ramada. These units can run monk sub-jobs. And so, you know, maybe you dig into those, like, there's an MR card out there uh, that I probably should have put on the screen that will buff punching attacks, right? Maybe you build a punch team. I'm going to do it. I promise you when I test this guy, one of his comps will be a monk slash pugilist comp. And it might feature Jiza. I don't know. Um, maybe Jiza has her moment in the sun. 
Everybody knows she's a monk, so I didn't put her on here. But I'm going to use some combination of these units you see on the screen with maybe like Jiza and that MR, um, you know, uh, strike attack. I always forget the strike attack, whatever. That strike attack card. So that's what I think. Now, am I going to pull for him? Yeah, I'm going to pull for him, but I pull for like everything. So I like to do this. I like to mess with stuff and make videos. Y'all know I'm going to pull for it. Should you pull for him? You know... I don't think he's going to break the game. Like, we have a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. If you're saving for that really exciting stuff, guys, stay strong, okay? Um, now, if you're not saving for that really exciting stuff, or you've been very excited about testing out um, strike comps, and you really want to get Jiza in there, you think Monk Engelbert's like the coolest thing in the game. It's pretty cool. Like, this dude with Engelbert, that's some tanky boys punching for a lot of damage. I'm going to throw that out there. That was a decide. Okay. Um, if you think that stuff's really cool, go for him. Um, you know, maybe put some Vizior aside, try and get him. It's been increasingly easier to max things lately. It didn't take much to max Sakura. If they give us that kind of access to this guy, um, like maybe some kind of step up banner that's nice or uh, some guaranteed way of getting him, then maybe think about going for it. If you just have to chase him on his banner, it's a whale only thing right it's only for people who have dumped a lot of money into the game or who have just been looking forward to strike coming back in some way um one nice thing not a lot of people out there are running strike resistance you just don't see it so he might sneak up on some people and put out a lot of damage and i think he's gonna feel to a lot of people like a uh, slightly less all-around tank version of agrius who might do more damage so that's my thoughts. That's what I think. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you're excited for this guy, if you're excited as I am. And uh, yeah, check out my review video on him, you know, sometime later in the week. And I will see you all in my next video.